Hey Southside, it's Mark and I'm with Elliot. Elliot and Evie and we are so excited to have Good Friday live online with you guys. We know Good Friday normally we're at service, we have communion as a family, we do some songs, right? You like the music part, don't you buddy? Yeah, yeah well guess what? We're still going to have music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In just a little bit, we're going to go to the Soche's house and they're going to do some music for us, followed by going to Pastor Scott and Miss Laura's house as well. We figured that since you guys are in your living rooms, we might as well be in our living rooms for Good Friday as well. So we are so excited. We're so thankful that you joined us. And now I want to turn it over to Soche. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Wave. Can you wave, Evie? Say bye. Bye. Hey, guys. On this uh, Good Friday, I want to um, share this scripture from Isaiah 53. It says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And by His wounds, we are healed. And that's what we remember today. That's why we can call Good Friday good. The darkest day in history when the Son of the Most High was slain on a criminal's cross was really the Lord of glory piercing His Son for our sins, crushing Him for our iniquities, and giving him the punishment that we deserved so that we might be healed of our sin and reconciled to God. And we're going to sing a song called By His Wounds. If you don't know it, it's okay. It's pretty simple. It's taken straight from this passage of scripture. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him.
This is one of my favorite hymns. And I thought, what better song to sing as we contemplate the death of Jesus and his atoning sacrifice, his pouring out of his own blood for our sins. This is There Is a Fountain. Let's sing it together. Southside, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm glad you could be with us. Uh, we wanted to come to you in your home tonight from uh, each of our homes. And so we Smiths are here um, at the Smith household. And uh, we wanted to uh, just uh, uh, ponder a little bit of what Christ has done for us here on Good Friday. 
I wanted us to consider a very simple question tonight. Who is responsible for Jesus' death? Who is responsible for him being crucified? You know, it is an awesome thing to think about that the God of the universe stepped out of heaven to come to earth uh, to live among us. Uh, but it is um, another thing to think about the fact that 33 years later, he was crucified. He was beaten, mocked, and scorned, nailed to a cross, and uh, hung there to die. Uh, who was responsible for this? Many say that it was the Jews themselves. They could have had um, Jesus released, but instead they wanted Barabbas. And let's blame the Jews. Others, they say, well, it was Pilate's fault. Uh, Pilate was the one in charge. He could have released Jesus. Instead, he's the one who had him taken off uh, and, and, and nailed to a cross. Others blame the soldiers. Uh, they were the ones who actually beat him and mocked him and, and actually nailed his hands and feet to the cross. While uh, others say it was the hated Roman government. Uh, it was their form of torture. It was, uh, it was their fault uh, for him being crucified. Uh, what does the scripture say? In Isaiah chapter 53, we read this. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Some even say God was the one to blame, that God uh, struck him uh, because of something he did. But verse 5 goes on to say this, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Friends, um, while we may ponder all these other things, who was responsible for Jesus' crucifixion? We were. You and I. Our sin is what nailed him to that cross. Our sin is what made the cross necessary. Um, now, the amazing thing is that Jesus could have, um, he could have, uh, he didn't have to go there. Um, he could have overpowered the guards. He could have um, taken himself down off at the cross at any moment. Yet verse seven says this, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Friends, he did not, uh, resist. Why was that? Friends, it was simply because he knew it had to happen. He knew it was the only way. Verse 10 says this, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. God the Father allowed this to happen. God the Father um, not only allowed it to happen, but it says it pleased the Father to the Lord to bruise him. Why was that? Because God knew that the only way for us to be reconciled for him was for Jesus, that perfect, spotless Lamb of God. He lived a sinless life and uh, uh, offered himself as the sacrifice for our sins. The only way for us to be reconciled for him was for him to offer himself as a substitute for our sins. Friends, as we come together virtually on this Friday night to consider um, what Christ did for us then, let's be grateful, friends. Um, I think we need to be grateful and, and understand the magnitude of our sin and understand the magnificence of his sacrifice for us. Um, it's not the fact that we can now be a good person. It's not the fact that we need to um, uh, now become something different. Friends, it is only the fact that Christ offered himself in our place that pays the penalty for our sin and makes it possible for us to be in a right relationship with God. If you're not there today, I wanna to encourage you to put your faith and trust in him. Friends, if you are, give praise and thanks to the one who died for you and rose again. Lord, we are so grateful for your sacrifice for us. Lord, thank you for dying, for being willing to suffer and to um, just to, to, to give yourself in our place. Thank you that we can remember what you've done for us 
Lord, we look forward to the celebration that we get to celebrate on Sunday because we know you didn't stay in the grave, Lord, but you rose again to give us new life. Lord, help us to remember and to celebrate that new life now. It's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen. hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. and stain he washed it white as snow what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus.